So let's start to build up some of these equations from, uh, from what we know about their zeros. So if I'm told uh, I have zeros at 3, 2, and negative 1, what that means is, you know, graphically, there's the point 2, there's the point 3, there's the point negative 1. I don't know, my, cu my cubic looks something like that. It, it, I don't know how steep it is, I don't know if it's going down or up or whatever, but I do know it's going through those, two, those uh, three points. So assuming that, if I think about that graph, that means that y must equal, well, this 3 means it would have come from an x minus 3, right? Because if I plug that 3 in, it makes a 0. And that 2 would have come from the factor x minus 2. That minus 1 would have come from the factor x plus 1. Again, if I plug the 0 into the factor, it makes a 0. So I want to write this, though, in this general form, x cubed plus blah, 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 just that, like as a polynomial. So I'm going to have to multiply this thing out. And I'm going to give you two different tools for how to multiply these out. Uh, you have three things multiplied together. So like if I had 5 times 3 times 7, I just pulled some numbers out of the air. I would go 5 times 3 is 15, and then I would multiply that by 7. Notice I don't have to go 5 times 3 and 5 times 7 and 3. Like, I just have to multiply uh, the, the first two things together and then multiply that by the second thing, or the third thing. So let me multiply these two things together. Two approaches you can do. You can just use uh, the distributive property. So distribute everything to everything. x times x is x squared. Negative 3 times negative 2 is uh, positive 6. Uh, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. So I have all those pieces. So if I throw things together, I have x squared. Those combine to a negative 5x and then plus 6. And then notice that's still getting multiplied by the x plus 1. So how about I keep going from here? I can still start, uh, still be thinking about that distributive property. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. Uh, negative 5x times x, negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times 1 is negative 5x. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 1 is 6. And then I can throw all these pieces together. Uh, so I have 1x cubed. 1x squared minus 5x squared, that's negative 4x squared. Uh, negative 5x plus 6x, that's a plus x. Let me write x. And plus 6. So that would be it right there. And if I didn't trust my answer, why don't I just graph it in Desmos and make sure that it has those zeros? And if I do that, I'll see that it does. Now I want to show you another way to do this multiplying. Like if this is too messy for you, um, I'm gonna, I could do what's called an array method. So I, I just basically start with a, with a rectangle. And I notice that this, uh, this first one has three terms. So I'm going to make three spots like that. And I have an x squared, a minus 5x, and a 6. And then the second thing I'm multiplying by has two terms. So I'll split it into two pieces, x and 1. And then this just kind of gives me a grid to help with my multiplication. Makes me make sure I have everything multiplied to everything else. x squared times x is x squared. Negative 5x times x, negative 5x squared. 6 times x, 6x. And I keep going. x squared times 1 is x. Oops, this was an x cubed. Sorry about that. I hope you caught that. x squared times 1 is x squared. Negative 5x times 1, negative 5x. 6 times 1 is 6. And notice I have all the same pieces in here as I did in here just kind of organized. And then I could, uh, you know, combine some like terms again. Notice I have some x squareds in common. I have some x's. I combine those like terms and I, I end up here again. So two different ways to do these multiplications. The big idea is set it up boop, 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 with your zeros. Make sure you're subtracting each of those zeros minus a negative one. And then um, just keep multiplying it out. So you get done with that. Why not check it on decimals? All right, let's do another example. So I'm going to throw some zeros at you, 5, but I'm also going to say that one of the zeros is 3 plus i, and the other zero is 3 minus i. Crazy. So I would have gotten these values, like that 5 I might have factored it out. This is going to come from some quadratic formula uh, through the 3 plus i and the 3 minus i. 
And remember, quadratic formula minus 4ac over 2a. is basically negative b plus or minus something. Notice that plus or minus, what we ended up with was a three plus i and a three minus i. Basically, it ended up becoming a three plus or minus i. So like this part evaluated to three, this part evaluated to i plus or minus them. That tells me that uh, in coming out of polynomials, my, uh, my complex zeros will always come in this form, something plus something i, something minus something i. If I think about this form a plus bi, if that is a zero, the other zero has to be a minus bi. These are called conjugate pairs. And hopefully it makes sense uh, that if these answers have to come from the quadratic formula, they have to come in that form because like negative b over 2a will always be this value. The square root part divided by 2a will be this, always be that value and it's plus or minus them. All right. So that's a, that's a good thing to, to hold on to. So with that in mind, let's build up a polynomial for this thing. So the 5 would be x minus 5. The 3 plus i would be x minus 3 plus i. And the 3 minus i would be x minus 3 minus i. Cool, let's clean this up a little bit. x minus 5. I know that this is a little, uh, gets a little cluttered, but notice what happens if I distribute that negative into there, x minus three minus i, distribute that negative into there, x minus three, a negative negative plus i. So it's gonna come out to this every time. So now I have to multiply this thing out. I have three things multiplied together, boop, boop, boop. And I'm gonna multiply these two together first. Um, so, again, two methods I could use for that. One of them is just to, uh, to foil them out. And multiplying out the complex pieces together first is super efficient. If you distribute, the, if you multiply the x minus 5 by, by the x minus 3 minus 1 first, you can do it. It's substantially more work. So two ways. Uh, I'm just going to distribute everything to everything. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3, negative 3x, x times i is x i. Now distribute the negative 3 to everything. Negative 3 times x is negative 3 x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is, uh, that's a positive 9. I'm going to write it over here. And negative 3 times i is a negative 3 i. Give myself a little more room. Negative 3 i plus 9. All right, now I'm distribute this i to everything. Negative i times x is negative x i. Ooh, look how those i's are going to cancel out beautiful. Uh, negative i times negative 3, they're both negative, right? Negative i and negative 3, so it's positive 3i. Those i's will cancel out. And then I have negative i times i, which is negative i squared. All right, so let's clean this up. I got an x squared. I got a minus 6. Uh, this right here is a 0. This right here is a 0. Notice those i's drop out. Uh, then I have this 9 minus i squared. Well, I know i squared is negative 1, so it's 9 minus negative 1, which is 9 plus 1, which is 10. So now I have x minus 5 times x squared minus 6x, boop, boop, uh, plus 10. Hopefully you caught that error too. So these two multiply together to that. That's probably where you might want to focus your practice. That might be something you don't have a lot of practice with yet. And then uh, I'll just keep multiplying to figure this out, x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 6x, negative 6x squared. x times 10, 10x. Negative 5 times x squared, negative 5x squared. Uh, negative 5 times negative 6, positive 30x. 30. X. 30. <laughs> and uh, lastly, negative 5 times 10, negative 50. Combine some like terms there, I've got x cubed minus 11x squared, plus 40x, minus 50. Check it on Desmos. You'd only see one of the zeros, the 5, but it's doable. All right, last one, like this. Three more zeros. I'm going to say uh, there's a 0 at negative 2, and there's a, neg a 0 at 2 plus 3i. And I want to build it up. Well, 
if I just kind of blindly forge forward, I know that I have an x plus 2, and I have an x minus this whole thing, so 2 minus 3i. And notice if I multiply this out, I'm going to have an i left over. That shouldn't happen since these are polynomials. So that lets me realize I probably forgot something. And that would be that if 2 plus 3i is a 0, 2 minus 3i must also be a 0. Rem remember, these complex zeros come in conjugate pairs because they come from the quadratic formula. So that means I have another thing here, which is x minus this whole thing. And if I subtract this whole thing, minus 2, minus negative 3i is plus 3i. And then I need to multiply it out. All right, this x minus 2 minus 3i, x minus 2 plus 3i. Now, last time, I just uh, foiled it out. I just distributed everything to everything else. I said foil, although foil makes no sense when you have a trinomial times a trinomial. So I could do that again. I could go x times x, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to show you another way if that way gets a little too messy for you. Three terms, x minus 2 minus 3i. Three terms here, x minus 2 plus 3i. Uh, I could use this array method to multiply it out. Uh, x times x is x squared. Uh, x times negative 2, negative 2x. x times negative 3i, negative 3xi. x times negative 2, negative 2x. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, negative 2 times negative 3i. A negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 2 is 6, so this is a 6i. Uh, x times 3i would be positive 3xi. Negative 2 times 3i. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6i. And then negative 3i times 3i. Uh, well, let's see. Negative 3 times 3 is 9. i times i is i squared. Oh, sorry, negative 9. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. i times i is i squared, but i squared is negative 1. So negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. And notice what happens. Negative 3xi, positive 3xi, those combine to a 0. Um, negative 6i, 6i, those combine to a 0. And so that means that these would multiply to x squared, boop, minus 4x, 4 plus 9, plus 13. And that's multiplied by x plus 2. And then the last step would be, uh, again, to distribute this out to everything. So x times x is x cubed, negative 4x squared, 13x. Distribute that to 2x squared, negative 8x, and then 2 times 13 is 26. Combine some like, like terms, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 26. And there's that polynomial that would have those zeros. Lots of algebra manipulation here. A couple things to remember. i times i is i squared, uh, which is negative 1. That's a huge piece. And when you're doing these, you can either do distributive property, distribute the first to everything, second to everything, third to everything, or you can lay it out in an array. All right. Hey, message us if you have questions. Let us know how you're doing.